Welcome back to Matt Flex and Chill. This is Rachel Gregor, your host, and I'm here with Jenny Blake. What's up, Jenny? Hello, hello. Excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Um, I feel like, well, we've been chatting a little bit off air about all the similarities that we've had, um, kind of where we've come from the last five years, I guess for me, five years, I'm not sure exactly for you, but I want to kind of dive into that a little bit um, before we start talking about nutrition and training and all that jazz. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your story, your background, kind of how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So I probably like you, like very active all growing up. I raced dirt bikes. I was a competitive cheerleader. So the mixture of like gymnastics and um, like acrobatics and I was a gym rat growing up. So I worked in the gym, lived in the gym, absolutely loved it. But that definitely where it started for me of ingraining the, okay, work out more, work out more, work out more. And I always had like, I always had abs, right? But I'm doing lots of backflips and things like that. That's a, a muscle group that you work there. And I also was always very active. So I never gave much attention to food at all. I mean, I grew up on Hooter wings, like <laughs> every, every Sunday night, like the family goes to Hooters. <laughs> That's, you know, kind of the nutrition I had back then. And the really, the like workout more just kind of came ingrained to me. And I cheered competitively in college at a really high level. And so like we were working out a lot, but same thing. I was like eating Taco Bell and on that college diet and just <laughs> didn't really know any better. And that took me into Post-college, um, I was living in San Diego and of course everyone's fit there. And I think similar to you after you are, are kind of done with your sport, you're like, okay, but what's next, right? Like I've got to do something physical, I got to move. And so that's, I tried running, that got a little boring for me. And then I got into CrossFit and I loved it, right? But same thing, I'm like, okay, let's work out more. Let's work out more. Cause one, it was fun. It had that gymnastics kind of aspect to it, but I mean, I was going to the gym hungry and I'm like, Oh, I just don't know any better. Like, Oh, you're not supposed to do this. And I was, you know, I had goals, not only some performance goals, but also it was just more fun and enjoyment for me. And I wanted to look the part too. Of course, I'm like, I'm putting all this effort in. I want to look the part where at one point I was like, all right, well, I'm going to get up and I'll run before work. And then midday I can squeeze in a little session because, you know, that's where I can get my like arms like session in mm -hmm. and then post-work I'll go and do CrossFit. And then I'm, you know, as I'm doing this, working out six, seven days a week, still like, okay, still not really looking like that. Like I look good, but it's like for as much as I'm working out, there's got to be something I'm missing, which of course you start learning about more about nutrition. And of course uh, you immediately think, oh, well, I got to eat less or I got to eat clean. So I would do that. But then the weekends would come and I'd want to, you know, I'm pretty social. You're living in San Diego. You want to go out. And then I'd be like, well, I don't really know if this is working anyway. So <laughs> maybe I'll just kind of reassess next week. And it was like this vicious cycle of feeling like, okay, do I work out more? Okay. This is actually getting a little overwhelming. Maybe not. Okay. If I eat a little cleaner or maybe be a little bit more on top of it, I can be a little bit skinnier or then I'd be a, if I don't, then I'm a little bit fluffier and I wasn't really changing my body composition into a next level. It was kind of just, I'm staying where I'm at. And then I'm on this hamster wheel of a little bit more, a little bit less. So I saw, you know, ladies and different people around me doing um, bikini competitions or bodybuilding competitions. And I was like, you know, if I really want to see what this is all about and really want to see what it's like to take it to the next level, I'm, I want to do that. So I was having fun with CrossFit, but decided like, okay, let's kind of redirect here. And I did my first bikini competition and realized that, whoa, it's 90% nutrition. <laughs> this is the missing factor. And it's not just eat clean. Like there's a strategy behind it. And so uh, I did that. I was in the bikini world for a little bit and I qualified for nationals. And at that point I was like, okay, do I want to take it to that next level or do I kind of want to take what I've learned here and then apply it to my, I'll call it like an everyday athlete lifestyle where I just enjoy working out, but it's not like the only thing I do. Like I still travel and social and different things like that. 
And so then it was kind of like a trial and error to figure out how do I take these tools that I've learned through what I've done previously and also the nutrition for um, getting ready for stage and then apply it to the lifestyle. And once I was able to do that, I, I felt like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what I've been, been missing. Like everybody needs to know this. I was putting so much effort in before, like it doesn't have to be this way. There's like strategies and tools that you can use that really simplify it. That's not extreme one way or the other way. And I just became really in, in love with it. And I started mentoring under a nutritionist, um, started diving more into it. Obviously, it was already a passion of mine. And that's when I started um, studying and got my license and, um, you know, kind of took off from there as far as people reaching out and wanting guidance and kind of building off of that. And so now I really work with the ladies who, who were me back in the day of like, okay, I know I can work out harder, but is that really the answer? Is that most of the, like useful, you know, is that the most effective approach in, I know nutrition is useful, but how do I piece it all together and really like, get the most out of my workouts, but create this routine and understanding that's going to serve me for the long term. So that's kind of my background and where <laughs> we're at today. <laughs> That's awesome. And like, just when you talk, I'm like, oh my gosh, like literally this is exactly what I went through as well. Um, and it just, I feel like there's so like so many of us, all the women that I work with, they have been through some type of this type of cycle, right. Where you're, you're like, you know, I need to work out a little bit more and I'm like starting to see changes. And then like, it's maybe it's not working. And then I'm just like, all right, let me just do more and more and more. And it's really like, once you get to this point where it's just like too much, you just kind of give up and you're like, all right, whatever. And then you, then a few months later, you're like, oh, maybe I should kind of get back on it. Right. And so it's just this like vicious cycle. And I know I definitely kind of went through that, especially with CrossFit. And I think there's a, there's a lot of people listening to this podcast who have done CrossFit before they, they currently do CrossFit. And honestly, I love CrossFit. I love the environment. It's just, like you said, it's a nice way to kind of continue with that kind of competitive aspect, you know, get, getting out of your sport. Um, but you can definitely take it too far. Um, I, I did that. Um, and I think there's a lot of women, especially out there who are kind of in this, like what you mentioned, like you're putting in all this work for like such a little return and it just doesn't make sense. Um, so in terms of like the nutrition side of things, maybe we can kind of dive in like where would you start in terms of like strategies? Like you mentioned kind of easy strategies and having like a structure. Where do you kind of start with that when you uh, start with your clients? Yeah, I think having a strategy is like the first step, right? And understanding it at that level. I see so many ladies that are like, okay, well, I've got something coming up. So I'm going to be a little bit more on top of it. Or kind of like you just said, like, oh, okay, now I feel a little bit crappy. I need to dial it in. I'm just going to, you know, clean it up a little bit, or they're very focused at like the, the micro level of, oh, today I feel crappy or today I feel fluffy. I must be doing everything wrong instead of like stepping back and thinking about it at the macro level where you really have a game plan that's mapped out over months. And that includes like your training, that includes your nutrition, and that includes a very specific goal. Because a lot of ladies will be like, well, I just want to, you know, build glutes. I want defined arms. I want to lose body fat. I want to like improve performance. I want to look better. And it's like, they want to complete make make over head to toe like in a very like healthy like you know mm -hmm. like fun way but they're not getting very specific as as in terms of like okay this cycle of my nutrition strategy i'm really going to focus on like building muscle or i'm really going to focus on like defining my arms and building muscle in my arms or building like a perky booty, right? Or really get strong and improve performance. And there's definitely overlap there, but it's really like honing in on like one overarching goal and then having a plan that considers your training and your nutrition together that's mapped out over months. Because to really change body composition, I think that's the difference between getting a little skinnier versus being a little fluffier. I think that's where we can get in this cycle versus like, no, I want to take my like 
body composition to the next level. And the, that takes time, right? Cause you're building muscle and you're decreasing body fat for the long term. You're just not increasing a little bit of, um, like you're not just decreasing a little bit of inflammation to feel a little tighter. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think really understanding that, and then knowing that that takes time. And so like piecing together the strategy that's mapped out over time. And so that's going to then take you to have different focuses during the different phases over that strategy and different metrics to go off of too. So I would say the number one thing is first having a strategy and getting really clear on what the specific goal is. Um, and then we can kind of go into what that looks like for nutrition or training and making sure those are working together to align to that goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it, I think it comes back to in this concept I've talked about on, in the past on the podcast is, you know, periodizing your nutrition and training for, you know, your goals and looking at the long term, like, like you said, six months from now, a year from now, not like a month from now. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of us, it's just hard, right? Even myself, sometimes I find myself like thinking about like, the short term. And it, I have to constantly remind myself like, okay, it's not about like how I feel right now. It's not about tomorrow. It's about, okay, I have this plan that I've mapped out like with my personal coach and I'm on like, am I, am I on plan for where I'm supposed to be right now based off of the structure that we kind of mapped out over the next six months. And yes, maybe I don't feel amazing right now, but I'm on point with that in terms of where I'm at. So exactly what you said, like some days, you know, if you feel a bit fluffier, other days you feel maybe a little bit better. And you're like, Oh, well I can, you know, splurge a little bit, but like, is that on plan? Right. With what, where you're trying to go. So I love every, everything you said. I, I totally agree with. And that's, you know, with my specific clients that I work with too, like we map out like six months from now, even if, you know, they're only, you know, signed up for like three months, I have like a minimum three month commitment. Cause I feel like anything less than that is just a waste of both parties times. Um, but you know, we map out like six plus months and then just reverse engineer from there based on like what you said, their primary goal, um, in terms of kind of like metrics and things like that. I know you mentioned that. So what are like some metrics that you personally use with your clients? Yeah. And same thing with me. Like I have a four month program because of, of that, um, same thing. And so typically my ladies are wanting to change your body composition, build muscle, decrease body fat, which they think is like lean out, right. Mm -hmm. Or get, get lean, which to get lean, you will want to build muscle, yeah. decrease body fat. Or like toned. The word toned, toned. Yes. That's yeah. the word. <laughs> yeah. Which it's like, okay, it's all the same thing here. Yeah. Um, so the strategy typically is, and we can talk about this too, but eating enough is like the number one thing I see for my ladies. So typically we want to focus on eating enough first. Uh, and that's the, the first two months of the strategy and pairing that with training, that's going to build muscle. And then you're in a much better position in terms of your metabolism as well to then go into a more cut phase. And so the first two months, this is also where you have more flexibility. And so this is more of a lifestyle phase and where you would generally be for the majority of the year. So a handful of metrics that I want to look at in that time frame for your body composition is, are you increasing strength? So when you're in the gym, are your numbers improving? Are you feeling better in the gym? The next is overall energy levels. Like how like are you not having maybe or needing as much coffee or do you hit that slump in the afternoon? Like I have some ladies who are like, oh, I don't need a nap anymore. Like <laughs> this is great. I'm like, yes. Um, is your cycle improving? So ladies might have like PMS symptoms and they're like, wow, this is the first time I don't get super bloated or I haven't broken out. I'm like, okay, these are the things we want to be looking at is how is your sleep feeling? And like, are you sleeping well? And so it's, a, it's less of a focus on, okay, are you decreasing weight right now? And are you feeling super lean? But are you, again, you're in your photos or in your just day to day, are you feeling more muscular, right? Cause that's really the focus there. So those are kind of some of the main ones as far as like physique wise and in your body, but also from the lifestyle aspect, I think that's a big part of it. Cause we're like rewiring from this like day in day out, 
to like stepping back and looking at a micro level and including some of these more lifestyle aspects. So are you understanding the nutrition strategy more? Are you feeling a little more of that food freedom um, because you're going to have more flexibility when you are eating more. Um, are you being consistent that like week over week, not perfect, but consistent week over week to be able to steadily increase your intake. And then another one would be hunger levels. So some of my ladies who are at 1200, you know, 1500 calories that we want to get up closer to 2400 calories based on you know how much muscle they have and how much training they are doing like once we start slowly giving their body a little more food is their body responding and saying oh thank you finally let's give me a little bit more food and a little bit more food in their hunger levels so those are just a few examples of what we'd look look at and you can see it's a lot different in that beginning phase compared to okay am i feeling super lean is the scale going down yeah. Yeah, for sure. And would you say like, cause I know, you know, for me and, and a lot of people I work with as well, especially women, I know we, we both work with a lot of women. It's very hard to like accept the fact that we might need to be eating a little bit more and like convince yourself to do that. So is there anything that you personally do like kind of convince your clients, like this is going to be what's best for you long-term. Like we need to, obviously we're talking about the long-term, but is there, are there any like ways that you try to convince them. Cause I know for me, sometimes it takes a lot of convincing to like get them on track and like trust that this is where you need to be right now to, to get to the goals that you want. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that is one of the biggest challenge challenges because we have been told in, like from the very beginning that eat less, eat less, like decrease um, calories, work out more. And so I spent a lot of time teaching and a lot of time unwiring that story and rewiring it again and again and again and, and teaching it from different angles because eventually it's going to connect from that standpoint. But then when you experience it, then you're like, oh, I get it. And then you start telling everybody, you know, because you're like, you know, you guys, it can be easier. There's so much freedom when you're eating more. So that's one thing that I do, but I think, um, I think when it comes to eating enough, it's really looking at like separating yourself from the average American. So I like to think of my ladies as they're very generally type A go-getters, like overachievers, they're overall healthy, right? But they may be they may have a little bit of a sweet tooth, they think. And they're like, oh, I gotta have candy sometimes. Or they're like, I may splurge when I go out to eat because I've been healthy all week, right? And they've done maybe different diets before, but their general routine is, is healthy. They're not in the category of an average American who has maybe 60, 70 pounds to lose, right? Who is not doing any physical activity, who's eating McDonald's and pizza every night. And so those people are getting told the message hey, you're eating like shit. You need to clean up your diet. Hey, you're eating too much. You need to eat less. Hey, you need to move more like anything, right? And so that message for them, any type of diet or any type of movement like Zumba class or walking, right? Or running, anything that's going to create some structure is generally going to be beneficial for those people. But the issue is when you take that on as someone who isn't in that category, that's when you take it to the extreme unknowingly, because then you're like, okay, I need to work out more. I need to work out more and work out more. And you're already eating, you know, 16, 1500 calories. And then you're like, okay, well to diet, then it must be 1200 calories or a mm thousand -hmm. calories. And so that is one way that I really explain it of saying, Hey, let's just like make these categories really clear and understand what's happening and why you're thinking about nutrition and training the way you are. And let's separate you mm -hmm. from the average American because you're at a different level. And then to take it to that next level, you need to understand that and build off of it. So that's one example and story that I tell that really hits home with people, but it is, it's repeating it again and again and again. And then when they experience it for themselves, it's like, that's really the turning point of when they're fully on board. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love that example. And it makes complete sense, right? Um, awesome. I'm definitely going to steal that. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> it's just like, so it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Like I'm not in this category. That's just 
sitting on the couch all day long, eating fast food. Like I'm already doing all the things that I quote unquote should be doing, but maybe now I'm doing too much. Right. Um, so when we're talking about like training wise, especially, you know, talking about CrossFit, talking about these classes, you know, like these circuit training classes, like orange theory and all of those, like those are very popular now. I feel like they've been popular for the past few years. Um, and like I said, I know you, you went through it too, like kind of just getting into that cycle of like, you know, the endorphins are running after you finish a CrossFit class so you're like dead on the floor, or, like after orange theory, your heart's racing. You just feel so good. Cause you come out like dripping in sweat. Um, can we kind of talk about how, like, yes, that feeling might feel good at the time, but if you're doing that every single day, if you're stressing your system so much, like it's just going to be so counterproductive to what your goals are, if your goals specifically are to improve your body composition. So in terms of training wise, maybe we can chat about how, you know, for example, these circuit style training classes are probably, or might not be the best for actually achieving the body composition you want and kind of why that's the case. Yeah. So kind of stepping back, I think it'll help explain my answer to this. So when we are in the state of, okay, eating less, working out more, even if we have those nights of going out and getting all the guac and chips and all that, like we are still, we're our average, right? So we're on average. I'm just, what I see for my ladies, is like 1500, 1200 calories, right? But we are burning like 2000 plus calories when we're working out. And so this, when like, not just from the workout, right. But in total. And so um, you guys can't see me, but I'm using my hands <laughs> to explain this. No, it's okay. This is on YouTube yeah. too. So if you want to watch oh, on YouTube, perfect. if you're listening. <laughs> Perfect. So we create this gap where that may work for a little bit in terms of like decreasing body fat. But when we do that for months and when we do that for years, we create this gap where we aren't giving our body enough fuel to actually get the most out of our workouts and recover and build muscle. But our metabolism also is going to be suppressed or our body's like, Hey, you're only giving me this much. I'm going to learn to live off of this much. Right. And so That'll also impact your you know, everything internally, like hormones and hair, skin, and nails, PMS symptoms, like all of that, right? Um, and so, first, you want to close that gap. And so, tr doing something like that's going to be cardio based, that where it's focused on burning more calories and more calories, that is just going to further push that gap away. Why from the nutrition standpoint, we're trying to close that gap. And so if we think, oh, I need to work out more and more and more and focus on cardio, um, we want to kind of do the opposite. And so from that standpoint, that's one reason. But the other reason is I like to think of training and, uh, and working out as serving two different purposes. One, to exhaust your lungs. And then two, to change your, your body like shape, right? And to build muscle. And so exhausting your lungs, like cardio can be a tool that we use. And if you have performance goals or just overall like health or enjoy running all of that, that's great. But I'm thinking of what's going to be the most effective and efficient way to build muscle and to change your body composition. And that's going to be lifting. So pairing that with the concept of we want to close this like, calorie gap anyway, generally it's going to be best to tone down on those type of classes and really focus on lifting. And then when it comes to lifting to really optimizing what you're doing in the gym. So instead of maybe just wandering around the gym and do, hitting shoulders here, or like what I was doing back in the day, like, okay, I'm going to squeeze in a session at lunch and just whatever I feel like I want to work that day. Um, instead of doing that, like really optimizing it. And so before we kind of go into that, any questions or thought you, you have on just the use of like burning calories versus using your training as like a tool to build muscle? No, I love that. And I love how you explain it. I think it's a concept that a lot, it's another concept that a lot of people need to, needs to be um, talked about more. It's like kind of what you were talking is like metabolic adaptation and our bodies adapt to what we've been giving it. Um, and there's also this concept called relative energy deficiency, which a lot of women fall into. I fall this, fell into this as well myself when I was, you know, constantly doing high intensity training, CrossFit, not eating enough, your body basically adapts to that intake. You have to take energy from somewhere when you're expending it. Right. So you fall into this, uh, 
like adaptation where your body starts to say, Oh, like you're working me so, so hard. Like I need to take energy from somewhere. I'm going to suppress some of the other things that are going on. Like your reproductive hormones, things like that are going to start to take a hit. And if you continuously do that day in and day out for months on end, you're basically just like exhausting your body. That's like the easiest way to describe it. And you're also telling it to adapt to what you're doing. So just going to kind of kind of like quote unquote, hold on to what you have, um, to survive basically. And I think that's something that it's a concept that it's hard to kind of get across, but that's really what happens. And it's this concept of metabolic adaptation and, and just adapting to that lower intake and that higher intensity. And so what you said, like filling that gap and like kind of reassessing, okay, like what I really want to change my body composition. I want to get healthy. How do I do that? Like, I need to start somewhere. And exactly what you said, like filling that gap is, is probably, and definitely the the first place to start. So I love that. Um, yeah, let's talk about training a little bit or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And I, I love how you say how you frame it too. And the concepts you, you use, but it's also like, if you're not, you're going to the gym to like build muscle or be lean, right. And that's build muscle. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have enough of the materials to build muscle and potentially the harder you work out, you might be breaking down your muscle to fuel that workout. Exactly. You're like, it's like very counterproductive, but you're not, you're not understanding that because you're in the like thinking you're in the average American category. That's just not at that level. So, yeah. so and one other you, thing I yeah. just want to mention quickly, cause you did, you did just say this, but this is something that switched my mindset a lot too, from going to like doing everything like type a, like go, go, go to like, okay, I need to take it back a step is realizing that like our muscles don't grow when we're in the gym, right? We, we are literally breaking them down right in the gym. They grow when we are recovering, sleeping, eating, fueling appropriately. And like, if you make that mindset shift, it kind of makes more like you just, it's a little bit easier. And that's definitely what helped me a lot. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because it just came to mind from, from what you said. Yeah. And this is a perfect example because ladies ask questions like this on, on my calls and same thing. I, I tell them like when I competed in bikini shows, like the week before the, the show, you're not working out hard. The whole thing is to like rest, put your feet up, relax. And then you just keep looking better and better and better because you're decreasing all the inflammation, you're letting your body like rest and recover. And a lot of times that will like put on a light bulb and be like, Oh, and then when I have ladies take time off, it's like, Oh, okay. I get it. And like, just again, looking at the macro level of it, um, and not being so like, go, 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 go. But yeah, I love that. So in terms of training, once you're at that place where you're like, okay, I'm on board. I know I don't need to like cardio my brains out. <laughs> I, I'm good with lifting, but I feel like I'm just kind of wandering around the gym or I'm just like doing some, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And so I always want all my ladies to be on a very intentional program. So it's a program ideally done by an expert that's like thought through all of this and it's also progressive overload. And so progressive overload training really just means that you are able to track and build from one week to another, because if we break it down and we think about our muscles that we want to grow, we need some stimulus that's going to be lifting, but we also want to like fine tune that even more and say, you know, I know I want to make sure that this muscle is growing and we can do that using the metric strength. And so when, if let's say for me, for example, right now, every Monday, I know I'm deadlifting and I know I'm doing pull-ups and uh, I'm on a program that we're going to do that for a handful of weeks. And so I have my notes app. I'm tracking my weights every week. I'm not going up. That's the goal. Like the goal is to trend up, but I know I'm getting stronger because of that trend. I know those muscles are working. Um, and I know that I'm like contributing to the overarching goal, going back to the beginning, like we talked about that strategy that has a very specific goal. I know I'm contributing to that. So I would say that's like the first thing. And then also like fine tuning even more and doing like mind muscle connection, or then um, optimizing your food or around your training to be fueled for that. But I would say kind of, those are like some of the things that I would consider anything else you have to add. No. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. I think, you know, 
just not going, like going into the gym or going, if you're working out from home or whatever with a plan, like every single day, cause it's also a lot less stressful, right? Like if you're just going to the gym or like going to your home gym and you're like, all right, like, like you said, I kind of feel like doing this today. And you're kind of just standing around. <laughs> like, I know I've gone through this. Day, I'm like, Hmm, like, what should I do next? And it's just, it's like more stressful. Cause then you're like, you're, you're trying to get a good workout in and, you know, go there and do what you're, you came to do. But if you don't have a plan, if you don't have like, okay, this is my first exercise. This is my second. This is what I'm shooting for. This is, you know, the weight that I did last week. So maybe I can increase that a little bit or do one extra rep or just focus a little bit more on the mind muscle connection or my form, for example, or my range of motion. There's so many different ways, um, like to progress or progressive overload. Right. Like I think some people tend to fall into this thought process that like, like you said, they need to be increasing every single week. Right. And that's not really the case. Cause once you do get a little bit more advanced, right. You're not going to be, you know, jumping up in weight every single week. You might not even get more reps, you know, every single week. Um, I think kind of, like you said, the trends over time is what's really important to pay attention to. And as long as you are trending up in terms of your strength and, and getting better then you're absolutely building muscle, you're absolutely getting stronger. Um, but I think, like you said, just having structure and also realizing that like each, like a training plan that is, um, like you can have an optimal training plan, right? Like you can have a training plan from an expert. Can't, you know, consistently fall through with that. Right. Like I have some clients that sometimes, you know, we talk through like they're coming from working out six days a week. Right. And we're talking through, okay, what are your goals? Like, what, what do you want to accomplish right now? Lose body fat, build muscle, all that. Okay. Well, maybe we don't have to be working out six days per week. Why don't, why don't we figure out what's going to work with your lifestyle right now and with your goals. And usually that means bringing it down to like four days a week, three days a week. Um, and then on the other side of that, it's, you know, okay, what can you consistently adhere to? Because I have some clients who maybe one week they're like balls to the wall, like five days, like got everything done the next week, their kid gets sick or something happens, or they're just not feeling it. And it's like, okay, I only worked out two days this week. So that's another thing, just like being consistent with the program and actually like choosing, you know, okay, this is what I know I can stick to for this amount of months and kind of structuring that for, for their lifestyle. So that's just another kind of thing that I've seen. Yeah. And to add on that, that's, I mean, I feel like I'm all of these things are saying, I'm like, yes, I just had a conversation (laughs) with this. Um, but for training and progressive overload, like, yeah, it doesn't have to be just hitting PRs. And I think that's perfect for now where a lot of ladies are limited with gym equipment or working out from home and they're worried you know, I had just talked to one client and she's like, you know, I was hitting this much for back squat, but you know, I'm at home now. I'm a little nervous to do that without a spot. And I'm like, yeah, you don't have to like increasing the, the weight. Isn't necessarily going as heavy as you can, like including tempo work or unilateral work where you're really slowing down and you could be at like five pounds for some things, but it's all about how you are like, like stimulating that muscle and then progressing that way. So I love that you mentioned that, especially now where a lot of people are having to work out from home. It's like, you don't need all this equipment. You don't need the heaviest weight. Like you've just got to be able to put your um, body in position to be able to adapt. The other thing you mentioned too is like consistency. So a lot of times, yeah, it's like, okay, I want to go all out and work out all the time, right? But oh, two days here and then five days, five days, oh, and then two (laughs) days. It's like, I had one lady who I spoke to the other day and she was like, I kind of feel like I'm doing very similar things. Like I'm at the same calorie amount that I was before. And I am seeing a little bit of change. And I'm like, yeah, the only thing that you've changed since we started is now you're giving your um, body consistently the same amount of food day in and day out. And now you're consistently training day in and day out. And so people think like, oh my gosh, I need to do all this extreme stuff and like underestimate the power, powerfulness, is that a word? Of being, oh cons- word. <laughs> being consistent. And that really is how you take it to the next level. It's like, okay, I've got these components in place now. And then I'm going to add on this one more thing. And maybe that's nutrient timing, right? And then you start being consistent with that. And you're like, oh, well, that's added some more 
um, you know, results there. Okay. I'm going to add on where I start. Tr- I'm already consistently going to the gym, but now I'm going to start like tracking my progress. Okay. I've been doing that consistently. And that's really how I think you take it to the next level. So that was a great point. And then I have one more thing. Um, oh, well, you were talking about like the type A lady who just wants to like go, go, go and consistently do more. And it really forces them to slow down, which I mean, all of our lives, based on the story that I know about you and me too, it's like all of our lives, we've been like, okay, I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to work out here. I'm going to work out more. Like I can't just not work out. Like I've got to have something new (laughs) um, and some new goal to go after. And so we get in this mindset where it's like, okay, get more done, go, 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 do more, do more, which has served us pretty well up into this point, but we're missing the huge opportunity of doing less, but just doing what we're doing more intentional. So it's like work smarter, not harder. And, but it's so hard because we've been trained our whole lives to do more, do more, do more. But exactly like you said, it's like, okay, actually six days a week isn't necessary for your goal. Let's consider your schedule. Let's consider like the shape you're trying to create and what you enjoy. And let's align that and create a routine that's going to be consistent but be really intentional and smart. So for example, you could work out seven days a week. This is exactly what I was doing back in the day when I was doing CrossFit, like working out six, seven days a week and just go, 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 go. But then once I realized, oh, actually I can lift and be in a progressive overload training program for four days a week, I could still do CrossFit one day a week and get that community, that fun, that joy, but just do it like for joy and then build off of that and like align my nutrition. And I get so much better results from just being more intentional. And I'm not doing two a days and three a days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's another one that's hard to wrap your mind about. Wow. Well, wrap your mind around that doing less can actually get you to better results than doing more. Right. And like you said, working smarter, not harder, being more intentional, Um, I think it's just like another hard concept to grasp, but like, once you go through it and I, like, I went through the same thing doing CrossFit five days a week, like, you know, it, it just wasn't working for me. And I was like, right, I need to change something. And I like hired my own coach and, and started to just like be more intentional and come up with structure and did a lot less than I was doing and actually taking time for myself, like in the recovery side of things that I wasn't doing, like I was going to CrossFit telling myself that that was my stress reliever for the day. Right. Like I was like, okay, I need to go, go to cross, I'm sorry, go to CrossFit and get my sweat on and get my heart rate up. And that's my stress reliever. But that was like the opposite. Right. So I think, sorry, I'm losing my voice. You're good. (laughs) I think that's just another thing, like taking a step back and being like, I could get amazing results with half the amount that I'm doing. And okay, now I have double the time, right. Or not double what's half. (laughs) I have another, you you know what I mean? I have a ton more time to do other things that actually make me happy. Like I can, you know, I don't have kids, but with a lot of the moms I work with, like spend more time with my kids, watch a movie at night and not feel bad about just like relaxing at the end of the day. Right. Um, not going to the gym every single day, like using that time for, for other things. And it's crazy. Like what happens in terms of not just like your mindset shift, but like when you start to see the changes happen with your body, you're just like, wow, like, I wish I knew this all along. And I think that's why we vibe so well, because it's like, we went through this ourselves. We work with like every single day, seeing women, like kind of this light bulb goes off and you're like, yes, like you get it now. (laughs) So it's just super powerful. Yeah. And too, it's like, I think that it brings up a good point of like, we want to achieve so many things in other areas of our life too. And when this stops being so like consuming, because when you don't have the result, but you're putting in all the effort, you're always wondering like, okay, what should I be doing? What could I be doing more versus like trusting the process and knowing exactly what to do, then it just feels like so at ease and you enjoy it more. And then, yeah, you have the capacity to do other things in your life too. 
And I think we don't give ourselves like our brains enough credit for how smart we are. And instead of just using our bodies to like willpower our way through, because we're capable, right? Like, oh, just tell me what to do. I'll do it. I'll show yeah. up and keep going more and more instead of like, oh, actually let's rely on how smart we really are to be more effective and be more efficient with this. And that's where you get the better results. So absolutely agree there. And then I was going to say one other thing on that. I feel like we could talk all day know, about right? this stuff <laughs> because it's so, so good. Um, oh, I was going to say too, and I don't want people to think like I'm anti CrossFit or anything like that. I think there are, I like to say there's levels to this shit, right? You don't have to weigh every single thing down to the gram, but you can, right? You don't have to use every machine at the gym and have like custom like program, but you can, but it's, it's really taking like starting from where you're at and moving up the chain in terms of levels. So if I have some ladies who are like, we're doing orange theory, right? But then they start doing CrossFit they're going to see great results, right? Because they're doing less, less car of that cardio, even though they're still doing cardio and CrossFit, right? But they're adding more of that strength component in. And I have some ladies who love CrossFit and I totally get this because the community aspect, mm -hmm. the competitiveness, like the joy of it, but they're, how they're approaching their training now, which used to be like, okay, I want to be first. I want to like get the best time, the really slowing down and approaching the whole session as like, all right, I'm really going to focus on mind muscle connection here. Oh, I want to like grow my glutes and have a perky booty. I've realized by slowing down in my squats, I'm not activating my glutes at all. So I'm just going to be more intentional with the training that I'm already doing, even if it is CrossFit, right? But same thing. It's like working smarter instead of mm -hmm. harder to still create that result that I want. And for some people, like where, where I was at, I made that shift from CrossFit to bodybuilding because I wanted to fine tune my physique even more and have more control of where I was building muscle. Right. But there is like crossover, mm -hmm. right. And there's different levels to it. So it's not like everyone needs to like be doing the exact same thing. But I think I like to think of it um, as like a trend line up and it's like, okay, where are you at now? And then what's the next level for you? What are your, what are your goals look like? Um, and where can we optimize what you're already doing? Sorry for there. That was the sound there. Where can we no, optimize no. what you're already doing in, in bring you up to that next level? So I just wanted to call that out too. Yeah. No, no, hundred percent. I think too, it's just like thinking, you know, like I have nothing against cross either. Like it's, I think it's fantastic. Like I love it and I do miss it. I haven't, I haven't done it in a little while, but just kind of, like you said, being more intentional and maybe doing CrossFit. Like I bring, like, I have a lot of clients that, you know, they're coming from CrossFit and they still want to do it. They still want to, you know, go and have that, you know, competitive aspect, have that community. And I'm like, absolutely. Like if that makes you happy, continue to do it, but let's be smarter about it. Let's, you know, instead of going to CrossFit five days a week, maybe you go two days a week and then maybe on, you know, another day or two other days, we're focusing more so on the hypertrophy side of things on slowing down and really focusing on building muscle. Cause you know, most, most people I work with, they want to, you know, look better. They're, they're focused on the aesthetics part of things and they want to see their hard work show up in their body composition. Right. So I think, like you said, just kind of slowing down. And then one other thing you mentioned too, kind of going back is, oh, the consistency, consistency part of things. So I wanted to just chat about this really quickly too, because I think sometimes we can get into the mindset of like, okay, we have to be consistent, consistent, consistent. And we start to think that consistency is on the same level as like perfection when it's actually the opposite. So I think that's something too, like when I'm working with clients, I'm like, like, I would much rather you be like 80% on point for six days a week than a hundred percent on point for four days a week, right. Or something like that. Six or seven days a week. Right. Yeah. Because that's where the consistency comes in. And we live in the real world. Like we're, we want to, you know, live our lives, go out to dinner, have a glass of wine, like splurge a little bit at times. And like, that's fine. And that's <clears throat> part of the process, right? Because if you're putting in this work, right. To achieve your goals, you have to be able to sustain the goals. Even if you achieve that goal, like how do you sustain it? And the only way you're going to sustain it is if you put these habits and these kind of mindset shifts in place that like, you don't have to be perfect hundred percent of the time you can have an off day and get right back on it. And literally nothing might even have like 
basically nothing happens. It's if you have those off days and then you kind of like beat yourself up about it. You're like, Oh, like that was an off day. Or like, this is an example. A lot of people use like, damn it. I ate that cookie. Right. Like I'm just going to eat the whole tray of cookies. Cause I already ate one cookie. Well, no, <laughs> like, yeah, that's going to mess things up. You know, if you do consistently do that, but yeah, have the cookie and move on. Like don't beat yourself up. So I think that's just another thing that you know, I went through that myself for a while too. And once I was like, okay, like it's not, you don't have to be perfect to see the results that you want. And it's actually probably better if you're not perfect because you'll be able to actually sustain it down the line. Right. Yes. I feel like I literally, I had got off a call with a client before this and what like word for word, <laughs> she <has> she <laughs> very similar, but I, I think of it too, as like the clients that I work with, the ones that are perfect, I, I actually see better results from the people who are like bring it back a little bit and are more on board at that 80% because they'll, they'll sustain it longer. And like we talked about earlier, like it's a strategy, it's mapped out over months. So it's more important to be consistent over those months than be perfect for one week. So I'd rather you, like I, I teach concepts and tools to include drinks in the week, include treats, include that balance, because that's, what's actually going to be realistic, especially for, you know, my ladies, which sounds similar to yours that are going to go out to eat and enjoy their lives and, and be social. So I think that's one aspect of it. And I use the concept, like you are your average, because if you take like three weeks and actually think about like the math problem and divide those three weeks, like your body represents like months and weeks of what you've done beforehand, um, not just the day before or that day. And so like, when you think about you are your average, like in terms of like the math problem, then it kind of puts a new perspective on consistency. And then also going into consistency, like for these like type A go-getter ladies, like we want to do more, do more. And not only like do more in terms of physically, but also on our brain, like, okay, I'm going to eat perfect. Okay. I'm going to track perfectly. Okay. I'm going to weigh everything. Right. And just the mental, like capacity of that, of making sure you get all of that in is strength like straining your brain. And so I like to think of it as a nutrition system that gets set up and it just runs on autopilot where it removes you having to do any extra thinking. And it's just like your default system of who you are and how you live. So again, you can free up that brain space to, for other things that you want to do in your life. The example I use is imagine pre-COVID, post-COVID <laughs> when you're traveling or every day when you go to work, imagine if it was in a different spot every single day, like having to figure out, okay, where you go, you have to pay attention. You can't miss that turn. Maybe you have maps up. That is so much more like stressful on your brain versus just being in a routine where you get to work and you're like, I couldn't even tell you what, what just happened. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. about something else. Um, like that's the kind of routine we want to create because going back to that do less, like when you have, like when the mental capacity is toned down, right. Then it's so much easier to be consistent because you're not relying on the willpower, even though you can do it right. We don't want to rely on that. We want to rely on the systems and tools that you have set up of it just being who you are. So you can maintain that consistency over the long run. And like, exactly like you just said, it doesn't mean perfect. It, I'd actually prefer it to be less than perfect um, because those are the ladies I see that actually sustain it for that long. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Completely agree. Well, this is awesome. This is an awesome conversation. Um, I feel like we hit on a, a bunch of different uh, topics and some things that are generally hard to grasp for a lot of people. I know for me, you know, for myself and, and for a lot of the clients I work with, it's, it's always just kind of like the education side of things and like continuously remind yourself, okay, like I'm doing this for a reason. This is the plan, like sticking to the plan, focusing on that longer term, like the longer term gratification versus like the instant gratification. Um, there's this saying, one of my friends said this to me a while ago. He's like, your body is an Amazon prime. It's not going to show up in two days. <laughs> and that always sticks with me because I'm like, it's so true. Like nothing's going to happen in, in two days, right? It's the consistency over time and the habits that you're building that that is what's going to pile up to like the long-term results. And I love what you've said about the averages. Cause I think that that not just like with, you know, what's happening over time, but even if we're talking about like the specific metrics, like the scale and body comp, like body tape measurements and things like that, like the averages over time is what really matters. The daily fluctuations, they absolutely like just, I have to continuously remind clients that like, just for example, the scale, like the daily fluctuations in the scale, 
there's so many different things that can cause that. Like we need to not pay attention to that. We need to look at the trends and the averages. And maybe we don't even look at the scale. Maybe we look at, you know, the other metrics that are happening because the scale doesn't tell us everything. So I don't know. That's just, just my take on that. Do you have anything else to add? No, I think that's, I mean, exactly head on. I think like, for example, I'm going to a wedding in a couple of weeks and I'm not thinking, oh my God, like, I mean, I'm in the wedding, right. With all the dresses and whatnot. And I'm not thinking, oh my gosh, I need to like do a diet for this wedding. Right. Because I have an overarching strategy and plan that I'm following that doesn't change for these like random events. And then at the same time during that weekend, like I'm going to be around all of my friends, like we're going to be getting drinks where there's going to be cake and all of that stuff there. And I have tools to like stay directional, but also enjoy that stuff and feel balanced. And I know after that, because I understand food that I'll probably be a bit fluffy. I'll probably be a bit inflamed and be holding on to more water, but it doesn't, that's separate than the, my body composition. Like I'm probably not going to gain body fat from that weekend. Like I, if any minimal, right. But, but in my client's eyes, they get on the scale and they're like, oh my gosh, I gained weight. It's terrible. Where I'm like, no, let's separate them out. Like, yeah, you're going to gain some water retention, some inflammation that'll like, that'll go day, go away in a couple of days, but like, let's focus on that nutrition strategy of your body composition. And so it just gives you so much more like freedom and flexibility and how you can make it a lifestyle and how you see these girls who eat these different foods or go on vacation and have all these delicious, bleh, delicious <laughs> things. And you're like, wait a minute, they must be genetics. And it's like, oh, actually, no, it's just like a system and a strategy and, um, like way more like pulled back than just what's what they're eating in that moment. Love it. Love it. Completely agree. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Do you want to tell our listeners or viewers where they can find you, you know, social media, your website, any programs that you have available? Yeah. So I coach lady active ladies. So ladies who are working out and who want to build muscle, decrease body fat in understand nutrition and set up the routine for the long term. So uh, my program is a four-month program called Create Your Shape. And you can find me on Instagram at Jenny the Nutritionist, or you can go to my website, JennyTheNutritionist.com slash create dash your dash shape and come hang out with the Create Your Shape ladies. Awesome. I will definitely uh, link all of those in the show notes. It was great to chat with you. Um, honestly, like I, I feel like we could just like go on for hours and hours and hours. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll, we'll have to do a part two if, if ladies have follow-up questions or maybe we'll dive into another specific topic, but yeah, this is great. Um, awesome. any, anything else you want to share before we head out? No, thank you so much. And I completely agree. We could talk about this all day. And I think there's so much that applies to like the ladies that we work with specifically which is great because that was the biggest gap for me back in the day of something like this and learning from ladies who have done it before. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. This is Yeah, great. for sure. Awesome. All right. I'll talk to you soon.